very often we read that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East, and very often the claim is that this kind of democratic regime creates an alliance or contributes to the alliance of the U.S., etc., etc. However, when you read the Israeli media, there are never references to Israel as a democratic state. The references are always to Israel as Jewish and democratic. Because if you say that Israel is a democracy, or Israel should be a democratic state, this is a subversive idea. This is subversive speech. Because if you simply want Israel to be a democracy, this undermines very clearly the system that we have today, which effectively divides the population of Israeli citizens into two classes, Jewish and all others. Okay? So in Israel, in recent years, people have been talking about Israel as the state of all its citizens. This is considered anathema. And all attempts to have legal decisions recognize an Israeli nationality have failed. So in Israel, we have this unique situation where you have Israeli citizens, but you don't have Israeli nationals, and you don't have an Israeli nationality. Uh, in the state of Israel, citizens are divided by nationality groups, and every individual carries an ID card, and the interior ministry, which issues these ID cards, keeps statistics along the lines of nationality and religion. So we have nationality groups such as uh, Jewish, Arab, Italian, French, or whatever. Okay? There are no Israelis okay? because the state is defined as a state of the Jewish people, okay? which means that Senator Joseph Lieberman is a shareholder in the state of Israel. He is part of the Jewish people. But Muhammad Bakri, who was born in Israel or Palestine and is a citizen, is not a shareholder. Okay? So the discussion in Israel is always about how Israel can be both Jewish and democratic, while it is very, very clear that if it's Jewish, it cannot be fully democratic. If it's democratic, it cannot be fully Jewish. And this is the real issue. So none of these things are ever mentioned in the New York Times. Okay? And I think that I think that as time goes on, these taboos on open discussions are breaking down. And we have more and more exposure to things that are basically so common because if you read Israeli newspapers, they are uh, described very clearly and very directly and very bluntly every day. And as you may know, today on the internet you can read Israeli newspapers in English very easily. You can obtain access to the Israeli media and there you can find <clears throat> all of these discussions, all of these debates, and in Israel, these things are never hidden. In the United States, they are. And I think that Israeli consciousness, if we can speak of a collective consciousness, is much more advanced than US consciousness, and we can understand why. Because if you live in Israel, you cannot avoid being aware of the injustice done to the Palestinians. It's impossible. Everybody talks about it. Everybody knows that. It affects every aspect of life in Israel. And I think that within the next few years, one of the goals of all of us who want to promote peace and justice and a better life for both Israelis and Palestinians, one of our goals should be importing 
some of the Israeli collective consciousness to the United States. Thank you.